Outside of Arusha in Tanzania, the Food Water Shelter Project is helping to build the Kesho Leo Children's Village. Inspired by Edmund Rice Sinon School's former headmaster Frank O'Shea, volunteers are working to provide local people with shelter and education, while also training the community in building and other skills. Five years ago, five girls came to Tanzania and volunteered for a year at different schools, went back home, felt like we hadn't given enough, got together, created Food Water Shelter, spent the next four or five years planning this. So what this is, is a children's village, not an orphanage, we never call it an orphanage because it's so much more. Uh, we're building a environmentally friendly, sustainable building. We are very lucky uh, last year when we came in April, we had an environmental award-winning architect from Melbourne come with us and he's designed this passive cooling system roof with the water tanks and all the big water catchment areas, so I'm pretty happy to be building it. Our whole idea was to come into a community that we knew and address every problem we could. Health, very important to us, so we have a health clinic. Education, extremely important. So we've got an education centre here, it's for early learning for children and also for adult education, community education. Uh, environment, hugely important today, so our whole uh, building and system here is all eco-friendly. Uh, so we've got clean water, biogas, organic farming, you name it, we've pretty much got it here in our environmental systems. A lot of people see rainwater harvesting as one of the best solutions to meet some of the water problems in the world today. We're using an extensive system, we've got 150,000 litres of underground water tanks and that's to meet all our domestic water needs here for 60 odd residents. We are housing vulnerable women. We're taking 16 women who've been left by their husbands, beaten by their husbands, raped by their husbands. they left with children, but they can't support them because they can't get the income. So we've set up housing for them, so they move in with their little families, and then once they're comfortable living in this area, we then get them to take some local orphans in. All the guys we're using here are local farmers. They all live within a kilometre of us, and so they've all built their own houses, but usually they're mud houses, so we've had to train them to cut timber square and using set squares and all that sort of stuff, all that's new to them. They might think we're quite pedantic because we want things cut all the same length and that, but it's, uh, they're slowly getting there and uh, I think it's really exciting. Now they're starting to make their own furniture. We've got a couple of blokes who've made beds for their kids or coffee tables, which has been really exciting to see happen too. Uh, we are learning about uh, using the tools, supervising people, controlling people, and managing the expect expectation of what things it has to be in at least on the time. So I'm trying to supervise all the jobs that has to be done here at the Kesho Leo. The quality control <laughs> on all the products you buy is pretty much null. So you've pretty much got to pick every bit of wood you buy. You might look at 600 pieces of wood and buy 200. And all the steel you buy is a bit, uh, a lot of impurities and stuff in it. So we've over-engineered everything so it's a lot stronger. It's interesting when you go to buy things and it takes four hours to negotiate on three bits of wood or something like that, so, I mean, it's part of the process here. Everyone likes to haggle and bargain. It's all part of the deal, so. It's an underground water storage being designed by a company in Australia called EcoFlex, using car tyres to provide structural support to a roof. But the advantages of it is that we have an underground water storage without losing land space. So in our case here, we'll be able to use it um, to put a playground over the top for the children to play on. But I see scope for it in small urban areas where people may have a small backyard, five metres by five metres. You can't normally have water storage and vegetables, but with this you could. You could have water storage under the ground and grow a vegetable garden on top. We'll be taking about It'll be about 25 to 40 orphans. To create a really effective family model, we don't want to give any uh, mama more than five children all up. So the house mama has three, three of her own children, we'll give her two orphans. So it'll just depend on how those little family units operate. So everything we do here, we start with looking after those residents, those vulnerable women, their children and their um, orphans. And then we look at moving it out into the wider community. Uh, we've got a large area over this direction um, where we're setting up our farm. Um, we'll be using organic farming principles and help to solve people's food security problems in their backyard. So rather than relying on big farms and importing food, growing their own more, more successfully right there in their neighbourhood. 
yeah, this will be a great benefit to the community, especially like the water, as a Koki said, and we are building the this building here. We are trying to bro to provide the water for the community, and we are trying also to uh, educate some of our mamas here. So in the future, they can be a teachers to teach the whole community about everything that we have been learned from food, water, shelter. But in every story of struggle and triumph, there is inevitably a tragedy. More often, the tragedy involves local people succumbing to disease or a mishap connected to their situation. Every single one is a personal setback for the team. But sometimes, it's a lot closer to home. In Tanzania, armed robbers have shot dead an Australian aid worker. 36-year-old Darren Strati was on a posting to help build a children's village. Darren Strati had been working for 18 months on the Kesho Leo project. His enthusiasm for the work and the people was inspirational. Darren Strati had been building shelter for Tanzanian villagers and was recently interviewed by a documentary crew. On Tuesday Australian time, the father of two was shot in the chest when robbers forced their way into the volunteers' quarters. Darren ordered Rebecca under the bed when a bullet came through the wall. Darren's death devastated the international community and forced a temporary halt to work at Arusha but it also galvanised his friends to work even harder to achieve his dream. His work goes on at Kesho Leo.